Hello Masoka Universe and welcome to the Europa League final preview for 2023, a final that will be played between seemingly eternal champions FC Sevilla and Ice Roma, the team that I'm wearing. Uh, it's no secret Roma is one of my favorite teams, but the reason why I'm wearing Roma in this video and not splitting between the two is that I have only the two Sevilla shirts here and I have way more Roma shirts. So, for that same simple reason, we gotta do with all, uh, an all Roma shirt on me. Uh, also on the back, teams eliminated by Sevilla, teams eliminated by Roma, and then the other two finalists on the side. However, we'll talk about the Europa League final tomorrow, which should be an interesting one, but not. I fear it will not be a great one. But, you know, we'll talk about that in a teeny bit. First off, where will it be played? Of course, it's played in Budapest. A town that unfortunately I have not visited myself, but one of the great uh, capitals in the way of Europe with not only the famous parliamentary building on the Danube uh, and the chain bridge uh, across the Danube and of course and the wonderful Budapest castle on the other side. And in case you didn't know it, Budapest is a portmanteau because the uh, part of the town that is with the castle on the right side of the Danube is Buddha and the other part on the flat side is of course Pest in case you didn't know that so uh, putting the two together to make the capital of Hungary uh, as I said a wonderful city that I really wish I could visit myself uh, sometime soonish maybe some political co co consideration at the moment uh, pulling me away from that but you know that's beside the point uh, it will be played at the magnificent Puskas Arena and of course named after the greatest Hungarian player of all time and one of the greatest players and bronze the greatest goal scorers of all time. Yes, Cristiano may have broken his record, however, um, his record was in, in a time where there not so many games played. I think he scored 83 goals in 84 internationals, something like that. He of course was part of the great Real Madrid side of the late 50s. Uh, scoring also like crazy there and he was part of the Hungarian um, great Hungarian team the mighty Magyars that almost won the World Cup in 54 and probably should have won the World Cup if it would have gone just by form the arena itself is built on the old site the old Nep Stadion uh, that um, look up the pictures. This was a, one of the most interesting stadiums. It was on a huge stand on one side and one that's very small on the other. Uh, was not only famous for being the home of the Hungarian national team and for big games in Hung, 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 Hungary, but for me personally, uh, it's also the site where Queen played uh, the first real big name concert in the Eastern Bloc, which of course you can buy. And I've watched this uh, as a huge Queen fan myself, watched this multiple times. So this is at the same site. The stadium we know meanwhile quite well, especially since, since it was hosted uh, games at Euro 2020. Um, it's an absolute gorgeous day stadium. Uh, it's I am literally envious for Hungarians that they have such a great national stadium. Uh, it looks wonderful. And it is also of good size. I think it holds around 60, 70,000 uh, somewhere there. Um, worthy for uh, a, such a great final. I actually think they should be hosting a Champions League final there sometime soon as well. Now, We've talked about uh, where it will be played. We also have to talk uh, the referees, of course, Anthony Taylor from England. We know him from his Premier League performances. I, don't, I mean, I always found him a capable re referee, especially on the international stage. He's maybe a little bit more spotty in the Premier League in a way. But I guess overall it's a good appointment, uh, if not, you know, at the moment I, do, I, I don't find there's not the one outstanding referee. So I think the appointment should be fine. And uh, if he lets the game flow, I don't know if this uh, would help uh, the game itself, because I'm not expecting a very flowy game overall. But, you know, I let myself surprise for sure. Let's talk about the two competitors in this final, uh, which are so, it's so weird for, for, for me to uh, kind of, I mean, I, in a way, those are clubs of similar status, but they're very different in another way that Sevilla is domestically by far not as big as Roma. 
how severe have with the six European uh, or UEFA uh, Cup or um, Europa League uh, triumphs have mu a way much heavier on the international stage, which, which I think makes it very, very intriguing. What's also very intriguing between those two is that, of course, Sevilla have never lost a Europa League final. However, Jose Mourinho never lost a European final uh, that was at the end of a season because he lost, I think, two Super Cup finals. But, you know, they don't probably count all that much. So uh, that will be a pretty big... Uh, that one of those series will break for sure. Uh, the most recent trophy, though, came to Roma, who won, of course, the Europa Conference League last season, which was qualifying them for this campaign, but not only because they also qualified for this campaign through the league. But um, to just show the discrepancies between uh, the, the, the two teams, we have that uh, Sevilla have won La, won, won La Liga in 45-46 and they have um, won the Copa del Rey on five occasions in 35, 39, 48, 07 and uh, 010 uh, and uh, won also the Supercopa in 2007. However, the Europa League, this is where the true, true, true shine, six-time winner, Reg Reg, no one has even close to that. I think the closest one uh, is probably Inter with three. Uh, they won it in, and it's all relatively, relatively, relatively recently. In 06, in 07, they defended it. Then they had that three in a row. Uh, in 14, 15, and 16, and they won it in uh, 20 in the Corona season in the final against Inter Milan. And then they also won the UEFA Super Cup in 2006, which I find uh, relatively interesting. Um, on the flip side, Roma. Yes, one, Serie, one La Liga title versus three Serie, Serie, Serie A titles um, is maybe not too much of a discrepancy, but it already tells a little bit of, of, of the story. Roma have won three titles, one in 42, one in 83, and the last one in 2001, which I personally remember very, very well. However, they have been a runners-up for 14 times. I have a feeling that Roma should be much should have much more uh, Serie A champ championships than they actually do. They also have won nine times the Coppa Italia and were runners-up eight times. The last time they won it was in 08 when they defended the title from the previous season. Uh, it's also interesting that they have been, except for the Cup Winners' Cup, in, every f in, in a final for every European competition. They were in the European Cup final in 84, which they lost at home to Liverpool on penalties. That must have sucked big time. Uh, they also were in the UEFA Cup final, so what is now the Europa League, in 1991. This was actually the first UEFA Cup final that I followed, and I remember that well. They lost that one to uh, Inter 2-1 on Agri with five German national team players on the field, uh, who just became World uh, Cup winners and played most of the games either in Milan or the final then in Rome, so uh, there was kind of this part. Um, I remember Inter winning the first leg 2-0 and the second leg uh, uh, with a Rizzitelli goal. Roma won 1-0 and I also remember uh, that because Nicola Berti was doing a dribble in his own box, uh, which was just uh, unheard of at that time. Uh, they also they won, of course, the Europa Conference League in 21-22, so the, in the first in, uh, installment of that. And they also won the Intercities Fairs Cup, which was kind of the precursor to the UEFA Cup, which then became the Europa League, although it was not organized by UEFA. That is actually a, a nice rabbit hole that you can now go down with to uh, look into that comp competition. They won that one in 61. So European cloud more on the Sevilla side. Domestic cloud more on the um, uh, um, Roma side. I always call Roma uh, the biggest small team because their titles do not correspond to the massiveness of the fan base and the club and whatsoever. Uh, when I say the two are evenly matched, I mean they met only once on the European stage. It was in the winning... Um, uh, season for Sevilla in 2020. This was uh, a one-legged affair where Sevilla won a relatively easy 2-0. Uh, however, when I compare the two, I mean, a market value, Roma is uh, has a higher market value with, uh, according to Transfermarkt with 317 million uh, compared to Sevilla's 209. Um, the average age is also interesting. Roma is a little bit um, 
Young and 26.6 versus 29.3. Uh, 10 national team players for uh, Sevilla, 17 for Roma. So all these uh, go a little bit more towards Roma, all these statistics, one would say, except for the fact that this is Sevilla's competition. Uh, it's also, uh, we said already the coaches, we have Mendili Bar uh, for Sevilla, who took over and ever since Sevilla look rather stable, he simplified things and Sevilla look like a force at that moment. However, uh, in matches against uh, Jose Mourinho, he only managed one draw. There were four matches in total, so Jose Mourinho have won, has won four matches. Uh, and even Mendilibar never faced, of course, uh, Roma, but Jose Mourinho faced Sevilla in ten matches. Seven wins, one draw, two losses. So uh, also interesting statistic. I think the, while I really like what Mendilibar did at Sevilla, and I think he's an excellent, excellent coach, he does not hold the clout of Jose Mourinho, who, as we said, has a really good record in European ties. So, um, if it wasn't the fact that Sevilla always wins the Europa League, I would say everything points a teeny bit more towards Roma. Also, when I look at the overall season, because Sevilla's season has been horrid overall, where Roma actually was for a while in the running for being in the um, uh, Champions League, then tailed off a little bit due to injuries. And I th also have to have, 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 have say, I don't like the way they have been playing as of late. However, that also prepared them well in the Europa League. So, yeah. Let's look at the pathway to the final. We'll start with Sevilla, who started actually out in the Champions League group stage. Remember, Sevilla were fourth last season in La Liga. And I think a year, year ago, I would definitely have said that Sevilla are a better team than Roma. Um, they had a horrible group, uh, group stage, winning only a single game, 3-0 at home uh, against Copenhagen, to make it then uh, into the Europa League. Uh, the way they were dist uh, destroyed by Manchester City and also by Dort uh, the Dortmund, there was a clear gap there, and this was in the bad part of the season. A little bit surprising was that they could um, dispose of PSV Eindhoven. Uh, the 3-0 was maybe a little bit too high in the first leg. However, in the second leg, they kept it relatively tight because uh, the goals came late for PSV. So, uh, in the end, they sorted it out rel rel relatively easily. I actually thought they might get eliminated by Fen Fenerbahce. That 2-0 does not reflect what was happening there. Fenerbahce was very well in that game. But then again, they kind of hung in there and got the job done in uh, Turkey. And then the crazy, crazy game against Manchester United. Again, first leg, it was all United. They had an easy 2-0 lead. They probably should have had three or four. And then two freak goals or own goals even by Manchester Chester United turned the game around. Make it 2-2 and then the atmosphere in the quarterfinal on the return like a 3-0 win was very, very comprehensive. But after 60 minutes in that first leg, Sevilla were more or less eliminated there. And this must hurt United fans big time because you had them on the ropes. You just didn't seal the deal uh similar nah, i think they deserve to win over juventus overall um they were better in the first leg juve um got a scrappy draw the return leg also they had more control but this was a wide open game probably one of the best europa uh Eu european games that i've seen the this season was then decided in overtime so that was a really good 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 one and given that juventus have a better record than roma would suggest that Sevilla might actually do well against uh, Roma. However, Roma also had kind of a shaky start uh, into the group stage uh, with, you know, just scraping by Ludogorets being, they played the other civil, civil team, losing 2-1 at home, getting a 1-1 away from home, but they needed the uh, win uh, at home on the last match against Ludogorets to make it to the next round. Where they then faced Red Bull Salzburg, which, of course, a team that I know relatively well. Um, they lost a little bit against the run of play, 1-0 away from home, but then had Salzburg very much on the control, got an easy 2-0 win. Uh, they hit Real Sociedad on the counter expertly in the first leg and then shut up shop. And that's the one thing that this Roma team can do better than almost any other team. They shut up shop, got it home safely. Against Feyenoord, 
a rematch of the Conference League final from last season. Um, a really uh, tense and open game ended with a 1-0 win for Feyenoord, uh, where you had the feeling that uh, will this Roma team score that man? I mean, they, uh, I think they missed the pen penalty, they, they hit the, 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 the woodwork, but in the re, 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 return leg, it was kind of tightish, but um, in the end, Roma prevailed and were the better team and Feyenoord just ran out of gas there. They can console themselves that they won the Dutch Championship, but uh, that, that was a, that was probably the most impressive performance by Roma in Europe. And then in the semi-final against Leverkusen, they scored one goal through Bove, uh, hit on the counter, and then they shut up shop and all the shit houseery that you wanna see or could imagine from Roma was happening in that return leg. It ended nil nil, and Roma just. And it was not even hard, they just needed to sit back because Leverkusen could not break them down. And this is, I think, the part that I'm expecting in this match. I think both teams will play in their home jerseys, although I could see Roma probably playing then. Uh, Sevilla maybe playing all white and Roma in all red, although maybe if Sevilla want to play in their black socks, Roma could play in white socks, you know. Small details, I, I, I would think, but I hope we see the main ones. And I would love to see, of course, SPQR blazing across the Roma chest. Um, the game that I'm expecting, I think if Roma score first, like, like in the conference league final, it will be a defensive performance of the finest. I think Mourinho will prepare this team very well. Roma will sit tight. The question is, uh, will, which players will they have available? Because we have, uh, I mean, Kazem Kumbula, of, of course, uh, out for Roma, but uh, Dybala is um, questionable, Nemanja Matic is questionable, Rui Patricio, the goalie, who could play a huge role, is questionable, and Lorenzo Pellegrini, the captain, is also quite questionable. So that is a little bit a tight one uh, for Sevilla, of course, um, Acuna. And Tecatito and uh, Gay will not be played because uh, Acuna is... Um, um, a band due to the red card he received against uh, um, Juve and the other two are inactive. So uh, that is also an interesting part. As I said, it will come down to Roma's stru structure whether Sevilla can break them down. Uh, overall, uh, the favorites, the bookies have Roma slightly favored and my model also favors Roma ever so slightly, 52 to 48. And I think it is really, really, really dangerous because we know what Sevilla can do. The last one is there's a really nice connection between those two clubs because sporting director Monchi built not only the great Sevilla sides, he then went to Roma. He kind of messed a little bit up, but Roma made it to a semi-final. And in the end, uh, he went back to Sevilla now. So that's an in interesting part. Um, and the last thing I, I, I want to say that while I said that Roma's European record is not that great, they have made it in the last five years to four semifinals at least. Maybe there's something going. Will Jose follow it up with another trophy and break Sevilla's record or will the Sevillanos uh, win a seventh Europa League title? unbelievable that would be for me it's really too close to call i think this will either end nil nil or one nil to either one of these teams i don't think there are many goals in this one but we could get a penalty shootout um and i let myself surprise if there's more happening who do you have in this final um let me know what do you expect give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and i will talk to you soon about the game tomorrow bye Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!